Now, we, before we get on to uh, using some time nodes uh, on, uh, on this tutorial, and we access our time nodes from this particular panel, or we do what we've done before, which is to tab into the uh, into the node graph and and type in our nodes from it from in here. But before we get into this, we just need to take a little a little a slightly more closer look at the timeline, uh, because there's a, a few things that we need to be aware of in here before we start. The first thing is to look at the project settings. Now, the project settings have two properties down here that we need to be aware of. Both of these affect the global timeline. We can see here that we're set to global. We're looking at the global timeline, which is basically the timeline for the entire script. And we can see it's currently set from 1 to 100. Now, that's been defined inside the project settings here. We can see that the project settings tell us that, that we're using a frame range of 1 to 100. So, for example, if I set that to 150, then we can see that the timeline now jumps to a duration of 150, so we've effectively lengthened the timeline. And we'd, we need, we'd need to bear that in mind to make sure that our, uh, our, sh our, our, time, our global timeline had sufficient depth in it uh, to show all the coverage that we were looking to achieve within our script. And the next thing that's related to this is the frame rate. So, for example, if I set the frame rate to a PAL format, which is 25 frames a second, then we know that 150 frames, which we've got here divided by the 25, that's essentially six seconds of play within the boundaries of that time. However, if we were creating something, say, for the American market, which runs at NTS, NTSC format, which is as near as damn it to 30 frames a second, even though we're still only using 150 frames, those 150 frames are now divided by 30, which means that this global timeline is only five seconds in duration. So. The purpose of just covering that, I'm just going to set that back to 24 and this back to 100. The purpose of covering that is just to explain that there is a relationship between these two elements and we need to be mindful of these two elements when we're setting up a script for the first time to make sure that the script is long enough to meet our requirements in terms of what we need to play. So I'll close down the, um, the, the project settings and we'll move on to the timeline. So we've seen how the timeline, we set the timeline range and at the moment the range is from 1 to 100. Now we can also define the boundaries within this timeline by which we by which a clip is played or within a, by which a composition is played made up of lots of clips and we can do that by set by changing the in and out points of our clip and the in and out points are essentially these little red uh, these little red triangles at either end so to move those I can hold down control and I can just drag that to frame 10 and similarly drag in, let's say, to frame 60. So if I just play the sequence now, you can see now that the playhead is only functioning now within frame 10 and frame 60. So even though my global timeline is longer than this, my global timeline is from 1 to 100, I'm effectively ignoring the first 10 frames and the last 40 frames of this clip. So I'm just playing a portion of that clip. And that's good for previewing. If, you, if you're working on a longer clip but you just want to sort of interrogate a particular part of it, you can set your in and out points for previewing purposes and then Nuke hasn't got to cache the whole duration of the clip, uh, including areas that you don't particularly need to scrutinize. Okay, something else happened when we moved the uh, moved the endpoints is that it activated this little area here, which uh, which is another way of doing the same thing effectively. If we it, this is uh, essentially enables this box. So if we turn this off now, then our global timeline reverts back to uh, the one to one hundred, and we turn it back on, and it reverts back to our ten to sixty. We can actually manually change it in in here. Um, so say for example, I can set that to twenty to eighty and we'll see that the in and out points move and sometimes that's a slightly easier way of going about it particularly when you when you're tussling with the playhead and there's also animation keyframes and things like that in here sometimes you can inadvertently grab the wrong thing so while you're gaining experience it makes sense to use this particular uh, this particular tool and while ever that's enabled then this is the timeline this is the boundaries of the of the of the previewing area Okay, so I'll set that back to 1 to 100. So we've established how the, the global timeline is set in terms of duration, in terms of frame rate, and we've also seen that we can actually control what parts we preview and, what, and, we, and indeed what parts we render from our global timeline. We don't have to sort of uh, be looking at the whole thing all of the time. Okay, 
The next thing we need to be aware of is that each of our clips, when we bring clips in, and I've deliberately brought, brought these two clips in, is because neither of them are the same duration as the global uh, as the global timeline, and both of them are different to each other. Uh, so each clip that we bring in, because we essentially the principle of compositing is that we bring in disparate sources and make them look like a, con a, 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 a sort of a conceivable whole, uh, then we bring in clips in with various different properties, and one of those properties is duration. So if we look at this particular clip by opening its read node, we can see that this particular clip goes as a frame range of 1 to 250. So it, it's much longer than the global timeline. We can see the the range there of 1 to 250 being displayed um, down here in the original range. Um, that means that we can that, that we can clip it up here say, to 150, but we still know that the original range is 250. Okay, so we can also control what part of the image that we uh, that we see by uh, by using its own internal timeline. Um, so if I connect this up to the viewer and we set the timeline to input, we're now looking at the timeline for this individual clip rather than the global script. And we can see that it's immediately changed to 250. We know that this particular clip is 250 in duration. And we have the same, um, we have the same controls now as we did before. For example, this clip plays, uh, it has animation from frame 1 to 100 but then it becomes static and then it plays out for 250 frames. Now we might not want all of that, we, we might want that animation but we might want it say for example to finish at, on frame 150. So we could do that by dragging our point, dragging our out point to 150. Um, you can see that I didn't quite get it right uh, so I can set it here manually inside the inside the uh, inside, inside this 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 in and out point box to zero to 150. You can see now that the in and out points have reset, and what that means now is that this clip is only ever going to play from one frame from frame zero to frame 150. So effectively, Nuke is going to discard the last 100 frames of this particular clip. So I've effectively trimmed it before compositing. And similarly, if I just disengage that and uh, and reconnect this particular part, we can now see that the timeline's changed again, this time from frame 0 to frame 124. If we click this node to look at the read node, we can see that this the range of this node is, is 124 frames. Again, it's longer than the global timeline, so if we were using this clip and we wanted to see it in its entirety, we would need to make sure that the global timeline was long enough. But again, Back in the input node, we can set this. So let's say, for example, that we want uh, that we don't want to see the the part where she she seems to be lingering, looking to the left before she turns, and maybe we maybe we want to trim off the first ten frames of that. So we could set that to ten to um, ten to one hundred and fifty, and and we can see that the 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 endpoint has been set to that particular part. So effectively, Newt will now discard the first 10 frames of that of that particular clip. So even before we start using the time-based nodes, we're actually getting some control over our clips and over our global timeline just simply by understanding and using the properties that exist within the timeline. There are some custom settings, but we will come back to those in a later tutorial.